Welcome back to The Code Wolf. Today, let's explore a simple question, which is how do we make our AI prompts and responses look better visually? So by default, when you build a web-based AI chat app, your prompts and the AI completions might look something like this, just blobs of barely readable text back and forth, a common problem in AI development. Well, let's see how we can easily turn these chunks of text into something like this, a much more readable, visually appealing conversation. Surprisingly, you can accomplish most of this with a single line of code, so please remember to hit the subscribe and like buttons, and let's see how this works. All right, so let's take a closer look at the problem we're actually trying to solve here. So I have this AI chat app open, and we're not gonna get into how to actually build this whole app in this video. I have other content on my channel that shows how to do that. We want to look at a really specific issue here. So if I were to say hello and submit that, the AI will send back this friendly response that says, hi there, how can I assist you? And so on. And all of this looks fine on the surface, but things start to kind of fall apart when we start sending more sophisticated prompts and responses back and forth. So if I were to say, uh, tell me how to deploy a .NET API to Azure, and let's go even further and say, uh, structure your response. And so we say we want a prereq section and we want steps, then we want best practices maybe. So we'll have three different sections here, or we could even say structure your response with these three sections to make sure it gets it right. And now I'll submit this. And right away, we already see the first problem, which is that our prompt is not formatted how we actually filled it out here. And that's kind of annoying because now this is harder to read. It doesn't look very good. But the response back is just awful. I mean, we just have this giant blob of text and a lot of sample apps out there or when people first getting started building this kind of thing, they end up with this annoying blob and it's not immediately obvious how to fix that. Well, if we go over to our code and this is a Blazor app running in .NET, but I am gonna to touch on how to solve this problem in the other languages as well. So let's first just look at what's going on here. So we'll go over to our home component and this is the code that sends messages to our AI. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint here. Uh, so this is where it actually sends it off to our AI client. So this complete chat async, that's the key method. So we'll place a breakpoint right after that where we get our response back. So I'm actually going to just copy this uh, same thing here and let's send it again. And now let's hit that in our breakpoint to see what the response back from the AI looks like before it's actually printed out on this page. That's kind of the key thing here. So we'll hit our breakpoint here and we got our completion back. So a response from the AI is usually called a completion. And it might be hard to see um, because of the small debugger screen, but if I open this up in the text visualizer, so this is what actually came back from the AI. And even though it's a little hard to see, if we inspect this, you can see by default, this is actually formatted as markdown. So we have kind of a triple hashtag here for a header and we have some numbered steps. This is pretty standard markdown actually, if you're used to working with that. So markdown is another markup language, sort of like HTML, but it allows you to format documents and text in certain ways. And so OpenAI is choosing to use that by default. Now, what's great about this is that there's tons of ways to work with Markdown through code. If we stop our application, there's a great package out there for .NET called MarkDig. And so if we look at this, uh, it says this is a fast, powerful, compliant, extensible Markdown processor for .NET. And what this lets you do is take Markdown and convert it to HTML or just work with Markdown with a lot of different utility helpers and just do a lot of things to manipulate text. But most importantly, it has some really simple helper methods that can accomplish a ton in just a single line of code. So we're gonna see how to implement this. Now, if you're using other languages, essentially all you'll have to do is follow the steps ahead, but you'll want to use whatever package makes sense for your language. So I was just kind of searching for some here. So there's showdown.js, um, and this is a markdown processor. So it says it converts markdown to HTML and so on. And you can also just search the NPM gallery for other packages. And Python also has libraries for this as well. So the key here is to just find a library that converts markdown to HTML or some sort of similar utility library for working with text like this. And so if we go back to our .NET app, what you would want to do here is go up to manage NuGet packages 
and we would search for uh, that mark dig package. Um, so there it is. I already have it installed, but uh, that would be the basic process to get that set up. And then in our Blazor app, you can just include that using at the top here. And further down, you just have to find where you're actually printing out the text for your uh, prompts and completions. So you can see right here, we have this mud text. So we're using mud blazer again. So we have all these uh, components and different tags here. And so up here, we're just kind of looping through all the messages essentially. Uh, but this is where the user message gets printed out. And then a little bit further down is where the system message gets printed out. So we just have to replace both of these lines of text with something that will convert that markdown to HTML. And so I'm gonna comment out uh, this line of code and uncomment the one below it. And this is using our markdig package. So the first thing we wanna do is use this markdown.toHTML. And this is really the most important piece. So we just pass in our user message text. So what we were previously just printing out directly, we now pass that into markdown.html or markdown.toHTML. And then we take the result of that and we can pass that into a new markup string. And the reason we need this step is because by default, Blazor will not be happy about rendering out HTML, but if you put it inside of a markup string, that will allow it to handle that properly. So then you can use the at sign to just print out the markup string. And so further down here, I already have this set up as well. So we can just comment out that line and then we have our system response here as well. So let's save that and then let's run our app again and see how this behaves differently. So again, I'll just say uh, hello, and it looks like we hit our breakpoint again, so I'm just gonna remove that breakpoint so we can talk back and forth here. But let's type out a similar message again, and I forgot to save that, but let's just say, uh, tell me how to deploy a .NET API to Azure, uh, the same kind of thing again. And you can see right away already our own response is formatted much better, and if we give this a second, then the full response will come back uh, we are missing our hyphens, but we'll talk about that in a second. And sure enough, now we get a much more readable response. So if you remember, we just had that giant blob of text before, and I'm kind of zoomed in here, so some of this is running outside the box, but if I zoom out one step, you can see this is actually formatted really nicely. So we have our prerequisites, and we have our steps, and we have our best practices. So those were the three sections that we had asked for up here. Now, this is just using the default behavior of MarkDig, but I want to show you that you can very easily take this to another level by writing some very minimal CSS. So if we were to inspect this, and we'll go into our Chrome tools here. So you can see our prerequisites. This is just an H3, and then we have a paragraph tag and an ordered list and an unordered list. So that package just converted everything to really basic HTML, and that means we can now do all kinds of things with CSS. And you can see there's even some uh, code snippets down here, and those are actually in a code bracket, which is really cool. So if we go back to our app, I already have some really basic CSS just kind of prepped here. There's nothing special about this at all. So if we look at this, uh, this is just font size stuff, margin stuff, but now we know it's gonna be reliably using these different HTML messages to print out the completions. And so we can just write rules for whatever we want that to look like. And you really only have to cover half a dozen elements or so to get a really to make a really big impact. So we just need our code element and some lists and headers and things like that, and you'll be in really good shape. So if I save this and jump back out to our browser, you can see already our Blazor app already updated, and now we've got our list circles back, so that looks better, and we've got some better spacing, and we've got these other list decorations down here but I've also formatted the code blocks to kind of stand out with the background so you can see what's code and what's not. And if we scroll down here, so these headers stand out more, you can see the sections are um, more defined and things like that. And of course, you don't have to make it look like this, you can style it however you want. And you also wanna make sure, I'm using dark mode, but you'll wanna make sure it looks good in both light and dark mode if you're using the sample app. But I think this actually looks pretty nice when you consider this is about five or 10 minutes of work if you really uh, get into this. So if this was helpful, please hit subscribe to support the channel. There's always more content on the way and thanks so much for watching.